What's going on YouTube, Champion Productions coming back at you with another Transformers video review. And in today's video, I'll be taking a look at the Transformers Earthrise Deluxe Class Wheeljack. Starting the review by taking a look at the packaging. The packaging is done very nicely. Um, starting here at the bottom of the box, we have Transformers Earthrise War for Cybertron Trilogy. It says that it's for ages 8 and up. Uh, Hasbro, Transformers, Generations, Takara Tomy. Here on the side of the box, it states that he is Autobot Wheeljack. And we got some very nice artwork going on in the backdrop there. Coming around to the side of the box, we have a very, very nice picture of Wheeljack. Move it out so you can get a good look at him. Very, very nice, very well done. And on the bottom it says he's a deluxe class figure. Um, coming around to the other side of the box, we have a very, very nice um, piece of artwork um, on the side of the box of the Ark crashing down to Earth and some Transformer characters. Very, very nice. And on the bottom of the box it has the Earthrise logo. Just very, very nice. And I'll move it out so you guys can get a good look at it. There we go. So very, very nice. Coming around to the top of the box here, we have uh, the Transformers uh, uh, War for Cybertron Trilogy logo and Autobot insignia. And we even have Galvatron here on the top. So very, very nice. I'm assuming we'll be getting a Galvatron figure perhaps in this Earthrise line soon. I really look forward to that if they do make them. On the bottom of the box, it's just warnings and stuff. Coming around to the back of the box, here we have Wheeljack in his robot mode, his vehicle mode, in that he transforms in 18 steps, in that there are uh, battle masters you can buy separately, and it has the Transformers and more than meets the eye logo. Also, something I feel like that's worth mentioning is whenever you remove this backdrop insert from the packaging, you get this red slip of translucent plastic. Now, what's cool about this is that, um... You can take it and press it up against the back, and it will decode these symbols and emblems and whatnot, and then you will find a word. I'm assuming these are each unique to the figure, and as you can see here, and Pila, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing that right, but I think I am. But very cool, a very nice nod to the 1980s, because what they would used to do in the 80s is that they would put the figure stats similar to this on the back of the box, and you would be able to take this little slip and press it up against the back so you could read the character's stats, and I really do like that. That's a very nice nod to the 1980s. Wheeljack does come with one accessory, that being his shoulder-mounted rocket launcher. This is done very nicely with a good amount of molded in detail, and the detail is painted with a gray silver, a gray metallic paint. I really do like this piece, it's very nice, although I do wish the rocket could extend or something. But um, yeah, it's very nicely detailed, although the paint on the peg that allows it, the rocket launcher to peg into his shoulder, um, the paint around that area is chipping. There is a 5mm port in the back, so if you want to take um, another weapon and plug it in, you can definitely do that. He does have a peg, it does have a peg on the other side of the, um, on, of the rocket launcher, so he can hold it in robot mode, sort of as a pistol or as, an, uh, or as a, um, I don't know, like a pistol or, or some other weapon, but I do wish the rocket could extend. That's my only real complaint with this, but other than that, it's a very cool little accessory. His instructions are done very nicely. I want to take a quick look at these. The instructions are done in green and gray, um, which is really useful compared to what we've been getting in the Studio Series and the normal Transformers Siege lineup. Opening up the instructions, you can see they are super clear and super easy to follow, so I really do like that, and I really do appreciate the change, and I hope they do something similar to this throughout all the Transformers toy lines. He does come with a warning sheet that just basically states that there's small parts and choking hazards and whatnot, so um, that is becoming more and more common, and I imagine they'll be packaging that with all Transformers. And here we have Earthrise Deluxe Class Wheeljack in his vehicle mode. The vehicle mode is done very nicely. I really do like it. We're going to do a, a spin around of the figure here. It is very nice. I really do like this car mode. There is a little bit of hollow spacing here in the back, but that's not too bad. It's fine with me. It doesn't really bother me. There is a little bit of a separation of white in the coloring here. As you can see, this is more of a creamier white than this, which in person isn't that bad. It's coming out on camera a lot more than what it would in person. But as you can see, it's very nicely detailed and molded. We've got some nice red and green stripes going along here on the front. You can see the headlights picked out um, or molded in. But you got some nice black here on the front. 
And on the side of the car here, we got some different sponsorship logos and whatnot. We've got Cybertron Con, Praxis, 638. We got an Autobot insignia right there. Very nice. On the top of the car, we do have an Autobot insignia. And there is a 5mm port, so you can store his rocket launcher on the top if you do so choose. There are also two 5mm ports on the back of the car mode. And this, the back of the car mode is done in that same paint that the rocket launcher is done with. So overall, very nice. The only thing I really kind of, I'm like again, it doesn't really bother me, but I kind of, kind of have to ask why is why they chose this paint. Like why didn't they use the same red for the um, stripes as they did for the hubcap? I really don't know why. This is more of like an orangish reddish color, and I really can't figure out why they used it. But as you can see, we got Aerobolt here on the wing. Just overall, a very nice car mode. I'm going to do one more spin around for you guys. And very nice very good looking car mode it really does look good and I really do like it and yeah for comparisons here he is next to the 2016 combiner wars deluxe class wheeljack and as you can see this new earthrise wheeljack just blows this figure completely out of the water yes their car modes share similarity but that's mainly in the paint and that's it you can sort of see some similarities it's just this car right this new wheeljack has so many more sponsors logos this one only has 705 written on the side it's just overall a very uh, the new earthrise wheeljack figure is just done very very nicely doing a quick spin around here get a look at the back now i do kind of understand where they had to sacrifice on this combiner wars wheeljack figure because with the toy line that was going on the gimmick was all deluxe figures had to form an arm or a leg so i get why they had to compromise but uh, this new earthrise figure just blows this old uh combiner wars wheeljack out of the water completely now for a more um, up-to-date size comparison, here he is next to um, Siege Hound, Siege Deluxe Class Hound, so you can get a sense of reference there. Um, so there's that comparison for you. Let's bring in Siege 35th Anniversary Optimus Prime. So there's your scale of reference between a Deluxe Class figure and a Voyager Class figure. Now let's get into the transformation for Earthrise Wheeljack, and I've got to admit, it's pretty, it's it's a fun transformation. I really do enjoy it. So to start off with, we're going to take the uh, side, these side panels here, and we're going to fold these out. These will become the ro uh, arms in robot mode. Then we can take this whole section here and rotate it around. Then we can unlock the arms and move them down. So take the arms, fold them down then rotate the arms forward and then uh, rotate the hands forward. Do that on this side, rotate the arm and the hand. Then we can take Wheeljack's head and fold it up, come around to the back of the figure here and take these um, wings for the back of the car mode and fold them out to the side. After we've done that, we can separate the front of the car mode real quick and uh, that will release the section of the uh, hood of the car and then you can collapse that into his chest and there is a peg on his or like on his neck area sort of sort of his neck area that will tab into the hood of the car to make the chest after that we can take the figure and fold this take this section here and sort of do a combiner wars transformation with the figure and fold it out but then we're going to take this part of the windscreen here and fold it in and finish collapsing the legs do that on both sides then we can take the front of the car mode here and fold these up to form the feet. After all that, straighten the figure out. Straighten them out, just like so. Take his rocket launcher. There is a peg right here and a peg hole on his shoulder. I prefer to plug it into his right shoulder, just like so. And here we have Earthrise Wheeljack in his robot mode. And robot mode for Wheeljack looks great. The transformation from vehicle mode to robot mode and vice versa is very, very fun. It's enjoyable and simplistic. And overall, the end products of both the vehicle mode and robot mode do look great. The robot mode has a ton of molded in detail, which we'll get into here in a second. And a lot of paint applications. And it just, overall, the robot mode looks just absolutely phenomenal. 
Taking a look at the details in robot mode, starting at the feet, we have some red and green stripes that carry over from vehicle mode. We also have some green paint on the shins and some nice molded in detail on the shins. We also have some molded in detail on the thighs and on the arms. And the roof of the car, as we saw during the transformation, becomes his chest in robot mode. So we keep that uh, nice Autobot insignia and that comes onto his chest and it looks great. Taking a look at the head sculpt, the head sculpt is done very nicely with some silver on the face plate and on the crest and on these side pieces here. We can also see his eyes are picked out in a nice blue color, although I wish they were a little bit of a lighter blue. Um, they're not as dark as they are on camera, but they are a dark blue in person. Uh, we also got some silver on these back wing pieces here, but overall very nice. And moving the figure out so we can get a good look at the figure as a whole. Turning around, turning him around to the back side, um, there's no kibble on him, really. Um, I guess you can sort of count this as kibble, but he has the wings in robot mode, so I don't really consider it kibble. Um, as you can see here, we got some nice molded detail on the back of his legs. Just overall, a very well-molded and well-detailed figure, and he has a lot of good paint applications, so the robot mode, again, looks great. Something I would like to say about these wing pieces is that they are removable. As you can see, popping this off, it is on a 5mm port, which means if you have a 3D printer, you can make your own um, sort of wing piece to make it a little bit more accurate or make these a little bit longer. Um, really, whatever you want to do, you can give them any weapon, you can you know, armor him up, do really whatever, and I imagine Hasbro did it for that specific purpose, um, maybe so you can make some more, um, you know, maybe make your own wing piece for his robot mode, or just so you can armor him up in whatever way you want, but I figured I'd point that out, that the wing pieces on the back are, um, you can remove them if you want. So overall, Wheeljack is very nicely molded and detailed, and he also has a good bit of posability. Starting at the head, he can look up and can look down. His head is on a 360 rotation because his head is on a ball joint, like I said. Um, he does have outward movement at the shoulder, and he does have the transformation hinge here, so if you need that extra bit of articulation, so to speak, it is there. He does have a swivel right above the elbow, although it is limited due to the transformation. He does have a 90 degree bend at the elbow, though it looks a little bit weird from certain angles, but it is there and you can pull up some very nice poses. He also has a 360 swivel at the wrist. Coming down to the lower part of the figure, he does have a 360 rotation at the waist. He can kick outwards pretty far. He can kick forward and kick backwards. He also has a thigh swivel, which isn't full 360, it is hindered, but there is still a good range of movement in the thighs. He also has a 90 degree a 90 degree bend at the knee, and he also does have ankle articulation, which is locked in vehicle mode. So if you look on the bottom of his feet, this sort of fills out, and the, um, the ankle articulation locks into place just so you can transform it. But then all you really got to do is un- lock that and it's good to go so overall wheeljack's got a good bit of posability and is a very posable figure overall just very fun to play with and for comparison here's the 2016 combiner wars deluxe class wheeljack figure here on the left and a new earthrise wheeljack figure here on the right and as you can see there are some major differences the Combiner Wars Wheeljack figure was really hurt by the fact that he was a part of the Combiner Wars line because he had to become an arm or a leg. That and the fact that he was remolded and repainted from like two or three other figures, I can't remember exactly. But it just really doesn't feel like Wheeljack. This new Earthrise Wheeljack figure is so much better. It's a lot more fun, a lot more enjoyable. His transformation is its simple fun, and just all around, this new Wheeljack figure is just amazing. And for some more modern and up-to-date size comparisons, here is Siege of Deluxe Class Hound. So there you have that comparison. Let's bring in Siege 35th Anniversary Voyager Class Optimus Prime. There are those two side by side. And overall, I feel like Wheeljack just looks really good with the rest of the Autobots. Um, he looks good with other figures on the shelf. And just overall, he's a good looking figure in general. And I really, really do like him. So overall, what are my final thoughts and opinions about Earthrise Wheeljack? 
he's a great figure. I don't have any issues with him whatsoever. The only thing that's kind of weird is that they chose a orangish reddish color for the wheel the wheel rim in Veal Comet. I really don't know why they chose that color. And the only other paint issue I have is that this panel right here is a creamier white from the rest of the figure, but that doesn't bother me really. I mean, I just completely overlook it. And just overall, the figure as a whole is great. He has a fun transformation. He has a good looking robot mode in vehicle mode. And it's just overall a great figure. With this being my first Earthrise figure, I'm really blown away. This new Earthrise line has been putting out some really good figures. Earthrise Optimus Prime looks great, and it, it just leaves me wondering what they'll do with the rest of the line, and I'm ready to see what they'll do with the rest of the characters, because with this being my first figure, I am very impressed with the line so far. But that's all for me. I hope you all enjoyed. If so, be sure to click like, comment what you think of Wheeljack in the comment section below, and be sure to hit subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video from my channel. That's all for me, Champion Productions, signing off.